Hey guys, coming at you today with a little recipe experiment because I wanted something to go along with my lemon bars and lemon lush cake for my vendor show. So I decided to make a keto rhubarb cheesecake bar. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a sweet tooth. Now I'm here to show you all the tips and tricks on how to make the best keto recipes possible. So if you enjoy my recipes, please hit the subscribe button down there, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment and share with all your friends and family. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today we're doing a rhubarb dessert. And I happened to have rhubarb that I had chopped up and frozen in my freezer. And I had already done a strawberry rhubarb crisp. I've done a strawberry rhubarb pie ice cream. I haven't done a cheesecake in a while. So today we're gonna do a rhubarb one. And it's gonna be more like a bar instead of like a full on cheesecake. I'm only doing a small layer of like a cheesecake filling and then a layer of rhubarb on top with a graham cracker crust. So. One twelfth of this is only going to be three grams net carbs, so it's going to be a decent sized piece of a rhubarb cheesecake bar. But I've never made this before, so you are going to be learning along with me. Hopefully, it should work. I mean, I have all the elements already on my channel pretty much, so I just looked up my other recipes, combined them, and figured this recipe out. So we'll see if it comes out today. We're going to preheat our oven right now to 350 to bake our graham cracker crust. And then I have one pound of chopped up rhubarb here. If I were to do this with fresh rhubarb, I would have cut the pieces a little bit bigger so that they kind of kept their structure and stuff in the topping of this cheesecake bar. But I already had it diced up to like make the strawberry rhubarb ice cream or my rhubarb pie, but it will work just fine. So I saw this recipe online when I was looking up like springtime desserts. And I was like, oh, I've never made that. And it sounds really good, but they had like big chunks of rhubarb in there. And I think that would look nicer. So to this, we're gonna add 160 grams or about a cup of allulose. If you use any other keto sweetener, it will probably crystallize once it comes out of the oven, but there's gonna be other layers on top of this. So I don't think it'll be that big a deal because you want, we're gonna have a crunchy like crumble topping on top. So you probably aren't gonna really be able to notice that if you use a monk fruit erythritol or erythritol blend or something like that. But I'm gonna taste this for sweetness because rhubarb is a lot more tart than the recipe I went off was the chayote squash, which that really has no flavor at all. So I'm definitely gonna taste this and make sure it's sweet enough before we put it on the cheesecake. Because I've already had this pulled out for a while, there's already like liquid in the bottom, but if you're using fresh, I would add a little bit of water just to get things moving a little bit, but your rhubarb is gonna release liquid when it heats. Now to that, I am gonna add a little bit of lemon. I have these true lemon packets, so I'm just gonna use two of those. If you have just a squeeze of lemon, it'll help bring out the flavor a little bit, brighten it up a little bit. You don't need it and you don't need a lot because rhubarb is already pretty tart. I just wanna add a little bit to hopefully bring out the flavor of the rhubarb a little bit more. And I have it already. I have that whole box of true lemon packets and I never use it. So I'm gonna put this on the stove and just let it cook a little bit. While that's going, I got my nine by 13 pan and we're gonna make our graham cracker crust. I already have my two blocks of cream cheese out. I've had them out for a little while. I'm gonna throw them on the top of the stove to get them warmed up a little bit. And I have two eggs out for the cheesecake part of this bar. So I cut it down by a whole eight ounces of cream cheese. And while we're at it, we might as well get our sour cream weighed out so I don't have to keep out my whole tub of sour cream. We need 5.3 ounces of sour cream or two thirds of a cup. I cut my recipe into thirds and did two thirds instead of all of it. So you can just measure with measuring cups for this. It's not that crucial. Five point six. That way I can put my sour cream back in the fridge and you don't have to warm it all up. Now onto the graham cracker. Do I have to look up the recipe? Cause it's not one that I have memorized. 
So make sure you keep an eye on your rhubarb, keep stirring it, get that sweetener dissolved in there. And you basically just want like kind of it, the liquid being a little bit syrupy so that it, you know, kind of coats the top of your cheesecake bar. So my graham cracker crust, I do have a recipe for graham crackers. I'll link it up there for you. You don't have to bake this and then crumble it, add butter and bake it again. You can do that. And I have done that. Like I've made a big batch of graham crackers broke them all up and then ground them and added butter and made them into pie crust. You still have to pre-bake it. But if you're not, you know, making cheesecake a lot like I do in the bakery, you can just make my recipe, pat it into the pan and bake it like that. So 45 grams coconut flour, which is supposed to be six tablespoons of coconut flour. I never get an accurate measurement when I do tablespoons of coconut flour though. Same thing with the egg white protein powder. It's so hard to get one tablespoon is supposed to be eight grams, so two tablespoons for this, but it almost never comes out to that amount. So that was like maybe two and a half tablespoons because three was too much. And then 10 grams of oat fiber, which I have found you can do the bamboo fiber instead of the oat fiber in most recipes. But I did the oat because graham crackers have like a whole wheat flour usually that gives them kind of an oaty flavor. So that's why I chose the oat fiber in the beginning. So one tablespoon is six grams. So one tablespoon plus two teaspoons gave me... 10 grams of oat fiber, but I think on the back of the package it says that a tablespoon is five grams. So that's why I always do the scale. So I, I haven't done this with bamboo fiber, but my crumble with bamboo, and I didn't like it as much as with the oat, but it does work. It just doesn't, I don't think it tastes as good. We just need a tiny bit of xanthan gum in here. Sift that together, and then I'm gonna add the sweetener, because we don't need to sift the sweetener. My sifter broke last time. To that, we're adding 48 grams of golden sweetener. Okay, so I don't know what happened to my microphone. Maybe my charger got unplugged or something because it's dead. Hopefully, it's okay sound for you guys, but let's get back to the recipe. To this, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of cinnamon because most graham crackers have cinnamon in them. We're going to give that a mix, and then we're going to melt 2.5 ounces or five tablespoons of butter and put that in here and then get it in our pan. Give this a whisk. There shouldn't be too much background noise today because my father-in-law is on vacation and I believe my neighbors are on vacation so they're not going to be mowing so hopefully the sound is okay for you guys today. It's actually decently warm so our heat shouldn't be turning on either. Lots of obstacles while filming. We're gonna melt that and we're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract to this once it's melted. I'm gonna spray and line my 9x13. You probably don't need to do this because you're gonna be serving it out of here. I'm gonna be pulling it out and cutting it so I need some insurance to get it out easily and if I break a piece it costs me money. <laughs> teaspoon of vanilla. Use whatever you want to stir this up. sure it's really well mixed in there because you don't want super big chunks of butter anywhere. Nice crumbly consistency. Sprinkle in your pan and pat it out flat. And save this bowl to use for our crumble because it's pretty much the exact same ingredients in a little bit different ratios. Or similar ingredients I should say. Pat this out nice and even and flat. Get it baking. If you do do the bamboo fiber instead of the oat, you're not going to get the color of graham crackers as much because it's so stark white. Rhubarb is cooking away. I'm just looking for the liquid to get kind of syrupy in there. If you're really big on crust, you can double this for maybe one and a half times. I'm one of those people that likes a lesser crust, more filling. <laughs> I still think this makes a decent sized crust. It's 
turning off my rhubarb, let it cool for a while. See, there's not a ton of liquid left and it'll thicken as it cools. The press is giving me problems today. It's also be easier if there wasn't parchment paper there, kind of moving on me. Okay, there you go. You can also do this in like a nine or 10 inch spring form pan. That's what I make a lot of my cheesecakes in for people like to buy whole cheesecakes. So we're gonna bake this seven to 10 minutes you just want it getting golden brown around the edges. Start with five. We'll turn it and see how many more minutes we need. So we'll weigh out our crumble topping and then we'll get on to the cheesecake filling. So I'm doubling my eight by eight crumble topping. So it'll be enough to cover the whole nine by 13. So 60 grams of oat fiber. 58 or two packed scoops of unflavored whey protein isolate. It's very rarely 29 every time, but sometimes it is. Oh, that time it was 30. That was 30 also. And then 144 grams of, I use granular golden, but you can use regular for this. I just think it gives a more, you know, crumble flavor. Cause usually you use brown sugar, flour, oats for a crumble. Whisk that together. This is my zero carb crumble. So you can use however much or however little you want. You can replace the oat with the bamboo, but like I said, I didn't like it as much. It still got crispy, but the flavor wasn't as good. I'm gonna melt a stick and a half of butter. I only add it enough to make it into a crumble though. So some oat fibers and bamboo fibers soak up more butter than others. So it's always good to just eyeball it and not like put down an actual measurement because since the first time I did my crumble, the amount of butter has changed. It used to be a stick per batch, but it has lessened quite a bit. So six ounces. Then the only other ingredient, you can add cinnamon to that. I'm not going to. I just think cinnamon in the graham cracker is the way to go. So we're just gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract to this and that's it. I set the timer for three more minutes on our crust and I got my food processor ready to go here. This is the easiest and the way to get the most fluffy, creamiest cream cheese ever. We used to do tons of cheesecakes in the bakery I worked at when first out of college and it makes it super fast and super light and creamy. So for our Cheesecake filling, we already have our sour cream, two blocks of cream cheese, two eggs, and we just need a half cup of granular sweetener. I'm using just regular classic sweetener, but in all my baked goods, I use monk fruit erythritol blend. And then the only other ingredient is vanilla extract, which we'll just eyeball that. Oh, we are adding a tiny bit of xanthan gum too, to the cream cheese mixture. That helps our topping stay above the cream cheese instead of sinking all down to the bottom. Okay, so the crust is cooling. We can get on to the filling. I did try the rhubarb jam. It is a little tart, but it is sweet too. So it's gonna go perfectly on our sweetened cream cheese filling here. I'm gonna get the cream cheese in here first. You can just do this in a stand mixer or you can do it with a hand mixer. I just suggest doing it for quite a while and getting it nice and whipped up. So our cream cheese is a very soft. So we're gonna give this an initial beat with the food processor and then we're gonna add our granulated sugar and get it real whipped up. Make sure all the cream cheese is in there. Nice and creamy. Add in your sweetener. This also ensures a non-grainy cheesecake because if you don't get our sweetener dissolved in there enough, it could get crystally in your cheesecake once it's baked and cooled. Sure, there's some sweetener on the sides. Get it all in there. This fruit processor is amazing. It'll be linked below. So I have the one upstairs that I have that I love. Super powerful too, and it's super cheap. So just don't put the parts in the dishwasher. They get misshapen, but it's a great food processor. Sweetener down at the bottom. Make sure you scrape all along the bottom of your food processor. One more mix, and then we're gonna add our eggs. Okay, 
nice and creamy. You don't see any sweetener anywhere. You can add your eggs. I'm going to give it one more, I think, because I see a little bit at the bottom. One scrape on the bottom. Make sure it's all up. Cut in a splash of vanilla extract. Scrape and add your sour cream. Scrape down all around the bottom sides. See, it gets really, really liquidy. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of xanthan gum. Now, my xanthan gum is super strong, so I'm only gonna add half of an eighth of a teaspoon. You can add a quarter if yours is regular strength. You can always add a little bit more if you need to. See, it's getting thick. More agitation you get to it, the more it gets blended in, the thicker it'll get. So I might add a tiny bit more. There we go, that's thicker. One scrape and a mix. Pretty gelatinized. Get this out of the way so I have room. This thing is heavy. May have to get a new microphone, so. Leave your comments below if you know anything about wireless microphones and what would be the best option. I've already had a wired one and I've had a boom mic. Boom mic won't work in here and I just, I hate setting it up every time. And it gets a lot of outside noise because it's up above me instead of on me. I'm not sure that's going to charge. So pour on our cream cheese. If you have any chunks, try not to get them in there. Sometimes you miss a little scrape. Spread that out, nice and even. Should really use an offset spatula. <laughs> the filling is pretty warm still, so I'm gonna put it into something different and get it into the fridge for a little bit, just because I don't want it to melt the cream cheese. And cream cheese melts at like 86 degrees and it's at like 100 and something still. So I should have done that earlier and it would have been ready for topping on here, but I got distracted. <laughs> okay, the jam is almost cool enough. We're gonna make our crumble real quick. So I melted that butter. Like I said, we're not gonna use it all or we might not use it all. So I'm gonna pour some in, pour some vanilla extract in and give it a stir. Might need a little bit more. I always do this with my hands. People don't like when I do that. Looks about right. Want a nice crumble consistency. So some flour down there. That looks good. Okay, that's all set. So we only had a tiny bit of butter left that we don't need. Let's get out our rhubarb topping that we have for this guy. It was very jam-like now. I wish it would have had a little bit more structure to the rhubarb, but again, because I used frozen, that breaks down the cells of whatever fruit or vegetable you have in the freezer. But if you use fresh, that shouldn't happen. Down to 82, so this should be fine now. Dollop this on top. You can just swirl this in if you want. I've done a raspberry or mixed berry swirl cheesecake do it that way too. I'll link that up there for you, my mixed berry cheesecake. I did it a couple different ways. It was for a friend's wedding whose son was diabetic and wanted mixed berry cheesecake. You don't want to skimp the people on that get edge pieces. Get it all the way out to the edge. Use all of it because it's where a lot of the carbs come from. Good. Now top with our crumble. There we go. Get all that off there. That will burn if it's just sitting on the edge like that. So the apple crisp cheesecake baked for 40 minutes since we're doing way less cream cheese. We're only going to bake this for 30. So I'm going to put it in for 15, turn it, 
another 15 and then I'm going to check on it. Just make sure it's not super liquidy, which I don't think it will be. And it should be nice and set. So 15 minutes at 350. See you when we turn it and pull it out. Okay, got my microphone on. It's been charging for two hours. Checked upstairs, they were plugged in. So I don't know if this is just done. It's not holding a charge. Been in for 25 minutes, so let's see how it looks. Say another five minutes and we are good to go. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. It's not very jiggly anymore. Gotta let this cool at room temperature for probably about an hour until it's not super hot. And then we gotta throw it into the refrigerator and let it chill for a couple of hours. And then we can get it out of here and slice it up and give it a try. See you back here in just a second. Okay, the cheesecake has been chilling for about three hours. So hopefully it's gonna be good to slice into and give a taste. Mm. Seems solid. I have some hot water here that I'm gonna use to loosen the sides up. Hopefully, let's not try and break the sides. Mm -hmm. Come on out. The side was a little bit pushed in there. Oh no, it's ripping. Okay, we're out on that side and it's cracking. I don't think it's gonna come out. Okay, well, we're gonna have to slice into this out it being out of the pan. We're gonna do it three by four. Try to go straight. That crumb topping made a nice crust on top. Nice and difficult to cut through. Kind of went rogue there. Make sure we got it all the way through. It's kind of one of those things you just got to commit. <laughs> no going slow. Probably could have chilled for a little while longer. This is definitely a day ahead dessert. Okay. Well, this guy looks a little tiny, so we'll try him, I guess. It might not even come out. <laughs> try a pie spatula. Hmm. Don't want to mess all the rest up. because I need to serve them. Yeah, that was a fail. Don't think they're set enough. Gotta love having fails on videos. Okay, well, first one didn't come out, but I think the rest will be salvageable. Looks pretty delicious. Just think we need to let it set for a little while longer. So I'm gonna pop this back in the fridge and we're gonna taste this mess on the cutting board. <laughs> Doesn't look pretty, but hopefully it tastes delicious. <laughs> See, there is rhubarb jam on there. Mm -hmm. Trying to isolate parts of it because you can't tell. Seems the crust got a little soggy, which is weird because my graham cracker crust doesn't usually get soggy. Mm. But the crumble on top is so crispy and delicious. So it doesn't even matter that that bottom crust isn't crunchy. Mm. It's tart and sweet at the same time because that rhubarb in there really cuts through the sweetness of the crumble on top. It's really good. I'm wondering if the parchment paper made it soggy on the bottom. It's definitely like a cheesecake bar. Like it's not like a full on cheesecake. It's more crispy crumble and rhubarb. It's so good. Mm. And only three grams of carbs for piece of rhubarb cheesecake bar. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little recipe experiment and hope you try it for yourself or try taking some of my other recipes and making up your own keto recipes. If you do that, definitely let me know in the comments below what you've tried, what's worked, what hasn't. Definitely let pe other people in the comments know. I love seeing you guys answering each other's questions and like coming up with your own versions, fillings, what have you. 
Let me know what your favorite spring summertime desserts are. It's almost ice cream season. I have a couple ready to go and super excited. Ice cream is my favorite thing in the entire world. So that'll be coming up soon. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll be back with more keto recipes. Bye guys.